Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near you, your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And we want to welcome all of his glory nation from east to west to north to south. Welcome to today's Take 5. As there's uh, many things going around the world, uh, we're going to bring you Andrew Sorcini and Bull Pony to show you how this impacts the financials. And through a little bit of military intel, like I was talking about the other day, uh, about the month of December, something big is going to happen in December. All right, Reawaken California. We will be there next week. Hard to believe, episode 22. Join us. Use the His Glory code when you sign up for uh, this event. There's going to be a lot of His Glory family members in California. California is like our second home. Uh, so we're, we're going to take a couple of the His Glory family members and upgrade them to VIP status. Uh, so you can meet the speakers, you can meet Bo, you can meet Andrew, you can meet General Flynn, the Trumps, get in the His Glory Green Room. So we will see you in California that Friday night, the 15th. We will be doing baptisms. We've done over 6,000 baptisms just at Reawaken events alone. All right. So we'll see you in California next week. All right. That's all the updates for today. Now let's get into the financials. It's good to bring Bo Pony and Andrew Sorcini back for our, I think it's basically a weekly or bi-weekly talk that we have. Yep. It's, it's been a lot of fun. And uh, it's um, this past weekend, I, I almost started to load up the car for the, be for the beach day, but it didn't quite happen. But yeah, I, I was meditating, I think it was Sunday night and just trying to get my, my bearings for this new week coming. And all of a sudden, ding, 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 ding. I'm getting text messages like, what's going on? Gold, gold, gold's going high, silver. And then what happened? Well, um, right. gold shot up to $2,149 an ounce from the all, blue past the all-time high of $2,075 an ounce. And um, it was fun, but I'm not impressed by it because it's uh, far below where we know it's going. And um, for anyone out there that's been watching us talk for the past few years, that's like um, wondering, are they trying to serve their own purposes by telling us that gold is going to break out or silver is going to break out? No, we believe this. We we know where it should be. We see what's happening in the world, and and um, this is proof that it can happen. And if you missed it, there's good news because it's pulled back, and you're getting a second chance to get in. So I would take advantage of that as soon as possible. That's an extraordinary point, Andrew. I had three people reach out to me on Monday and say, you know, uh, listening to you and and uh, Andrew and Bo, when, they, when you guys get together, uh, you, th what you said is happening. They, 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 they know it's happening. Yep. And I, I want to say this. Yeah. Yep. So I'll just I'll say this as well, too, with regards. Look at the price of Bitcoin right now. OK, I just want to use this as an example, because on the blockchain, you they have to you have to mine Bitcoin and just like you would mine precious metals. So it takes energy to create this. And so you can't they cannot create Bitcoin out of thin air. People say Bitcoin's out of thin air. No, it's not. Actually, to get the Bitcoin, you have to take physical work and, and spend time and money to mine this and to create math to solve math calculations and then ultimately you mine Bitcoin. The point I'm trying to make is 
Bitcoin right now is over 40,000. Okay. That's where gold should be. I'm going to repeat that. Wow. Bitcoin's over 40,000. Gold should be there. What they do is it's called price manipulation. They have paper contracts that the one bank sells to the other bank. They've been doing this for generations. So one day, uh, one month, one bank's the buyer and the other bank's the seller. Then they flip the next month and they've been doing this for generations using paper contracts. So you, when you go to um, online, you'll see these contracts going, you know, these, uh, there's called future contracts. I know David, um, Andrew knows all about the future contracts. And what they'll do with these future contracts, they will sell them over and over and over again. So that's like taking a house and selling a house five to 500 people. But each one of those don't know that. So all 500 think they own the home. So this is what they do is it's price manipulation because, because paper can be created out of thin air and they're, and they're creating these digits just to manipulate the price. And so we've been saying buy gold and silver. Why? Because number one, it, in my heart, I know what's coming. I know what God has shown me and revealed to me, and I know what what's, what's about to go down here, okay? And so we're seeing these prices go up. And what have we said on every one of our podcasts, Andrew and Pastor Dave? There's a roof. It's like it's like you look above you, you have a roof in your in, in um you know in your room. That roof for gold is two thousand one hundred dollars. For silver, it's about between twenty five to twenty seven dollars. So every time you you jump up and you hit that roof, so so gold will jump up, it'll hit two thousand to twenty one hundred, and they smash it down using these paper contracts to bring it back down. So on the open on Sunday, it was really funny because I was with a family hanging out. I was thinking a text from Andrew like gold's up seventy five dollars, and wow, this is great, you know. And it's exciting because that was it was the start of what's called true price discovery. But what it immediately happened was the banksters got in. And these are gangsters, banksters. The banksters got in and they immediately started creating more paper contracts and they smashed the price down from being up $75 over the all-time high on the open. And they immediately smashed it. By Monday, it was down $120 on gold. Why? The roof's up $2,100. Are you with me? So if it goes through that roof, they will do anything and everything to immediately smash the price down. That's exactly what happened. And so silver went down with gold. Why? Because silver was toying with $25, $26. Okay. Yeah. So they're at the roof right now and they cannot let it go because if gold and silver blow vertical, so if gold was at true price discovery right now, like $40,000 like Bitcoin, okay, the dollar would be worthless. I'm going to repeat that. If, if gold was $40,000 an ounce, the dollar would be worthless or people wouldn't want the dollar. So it's a smoke and mirrors game about doing what? One very simple thing. Maintain the value of the U.S. dollar. Because why? What have we talked about? What have I talked about on all my podcasts? What do we talk about on, these, on, this, on this podcast with Andrew and Dave? How do they build Mystery Babylon? With the money. With the U.S. dollar. Federal, not federal, reserve, not a reserve, note. So they create money out of thin air, and they've built Mystery Babylon. With Mystery Babylon, they control all the politicians, the banks, the school boards. Uh, you know, you can just go to the churches. You can just go on and on. And so the money is they have to maintain the value of the U.S. dollar high because if the dollar crashed, their controls are lost. So that's why they will do anything and everything to smash the price of gold, keep it under 2100 keep silver under $25, because if true price discovery were to be an event, what would happen is that that would mark the collapse of the U.S. dollar which that will be the loss of their control mechanisms of humanity, because what is Babylon? A control mechanism in its simplicity it, to control and enslave humanity. So there's no way that gold's ever going to blow through $2,100 and hold that price. Silver's never going to go through $25, $26, $27, go to $50 or $100 and hold that price unless... We have an intervention because whose battle was it at the Red Sea, Pastor Dave? God's. Yep. See, God is about to intervene on our world because 
we've talked about Second Chronicles. If my children who are called by my name humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. We overturned Roe v. Wade. It's very clear in the Bible. If God is with us, who can stand against us? And then so to kind of open this whole thing up, what I'm saying is we are at a precipice of, of time. Pastor Dave started saying December is going to be epic. It is. Yep. Why? Because we're this far from Hanukkah. It starts this Friday. We, we, we know that Corona started on Hanukkah four years ago. I'm going to repeat that. The first case of diagnosed Corona was on the last day of Hanukkah, which was December 30th that year in 2019, and then the next four years of hell began. So we are at a critical time point in our world right now. God's not going to be mocked. We're in harvest right now. We just passed Thanksgiving. This is harvest season. We're stepping into the greatest move of God's spirit ever. So what an exciting time. It was That was just a prelude, Andrew. This, what just happened on Sunday when, when gold blew $75 in a single moment, okay? That's only a taste of what's coming. So I got a two-part question for you. Um, before I say that, December is... Uh, I noticeably can feel a spiritual movement in December. Everything's changed since we've gone into December from a spiritual level. Also, all the military generals I talk to are pointing to something significant military-wise happening in December. But the question is, uh, Bo and Andrew, if if 40,000 is the true number of gold, what is the true number of silver, A? And number two is, what action, what item, what world event stops this manipulation from them continuing to do what they did on Sunday? Well, that's that's a great question. So what I'm doing right now is I pulled out my phone and I'm taking the price of gold and dividing it by the price of, of silver. And um, so right now the ratio of, um, of ounces to silver to gold, 83 and a half ounces of, or sorry, 84 ounces of silver equal one ounce of gold. So in, in my opinion, if gold hit 40,000, you divide that by 84, then that would mean that silver is at $476 an ounce, which takes us very close to where Bo predicts. Um, but actually, but let me pause 600. you for a minute and, and then continue, Andrew, but I just want to add one thing, okay? You're running, see, the, 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 there's a little issue with your calculation because it's a, it's a beautiful calculation you laid out. The ratio is 80 to 1, okay? But when you see, uh, what do I do? I study cycles. And so when you go, anybody can go verify what I'm saying. When you go study the bull market, because we're stepping into the bull market, the bull market of 2011, okay, when silver went to $49 and then they smashed it down. Silver topped, it hit $49 like it did in 1980, okay, so it made a double top. Now, what I'm trying to say is on that event in 2011, when silver shot up to $49, gold shortly thereafter went to $2,000. The point is the ratio then was 30. Oh yes. So when so just using forty thousand dollars on a ratio of thirty, you're talking uh, thirteen hundred dollar silver per ounce, and that's the problem with forty thousand. Is I don't even think that's still the high for gold, right? So so when when God intervenes, the dollar is going to plummet. The dollar is going to lose its status as the world reserve currency. So we're people. You know, the very most common question is we when uh, when you know when do we when the dollar crashes, you know, when do you sell silver? Or when do you sell gold? To my, my answer is very simple. You're owning the new currency. You own the new currency. You're not going to be selling it. Yeah. I'm exactly. so, so continue, Anna, so continue. But that was what I wanted to add about ratios, because you made a very good point about ratios. And then you'd go back and study in history. 30 to 1 happened in 2011. So, and historically before that, it was um, 16 to 1, and that's when our dollar was actually actually backed by gold. So, um, for years and years and years, it was like 15 to 1 or 16 to 1. So, for people listening, that would mean that about 16 ounces of silver should add up to the price of one ounce of gold. And, um, and using that math, that would put you to $2,500 an ounce silver. Okay? Now, where is that in the Bible? Blessings are 30, 60, 100 fold. 20 five times a hundred there's your twenty five hundred dollar an ounce silver it's it's unbelievable and and um just to break down what Bo had already said about why the the banks 
And the people that are traders for the big banks like JP Morgan Chase manipulate the price of gold and silver is that if gold, for example, had been allowed to run like it did this last Sunday, I believe it could have marched somewhere between 23 to 2,500 an ounce before the end of this year. And it still might. So if that were allowed to happen, then that means that people might start selling extra properties that they have. They might um, want to continue selling their stocks. They'll go to the banks. There will be runs on the bank because they, they will want to pull funds out of the bank and put it into physical gold and silver, which is outside of the centralized banking system. And those dollars, once they leave these brokers' hands, they very seldom make it back into their hands. So that's a reason for them to worry. So what kind of what event triggers this that the banks can't hold it back anymore? So I, think my, my answer, yep. I would say my answer to that is maybe Andrew can answer further. This is the thing is, so you're asking a question that I truly, there, there's a, there's two things. We don't know the day or the hour God's going to strike to do this. And the other things, we don't really know the event on how he's going to pull it, pull this off. Because this is, this is like that 5D chess. God's setting all these people up for the perfect strike, just like what happened at the Red Sea. He's setting everything up. He brought in Israel, used Israel as bait for Pharaoh to ultimately, in 24 hours, flip the scales. Israel was on the other side. Pharaoh and his kingdom was destroyed. And, and, you know, all the, after the Red Sea closed. So, that's a very um, tough question to know how this plays out, but I do know there's a prophetic word very clearly by the prophet Kim Clement, and he stated, the brothers of Goliath stand in glee, we will cripple you. And so what was the brothers of Goliath are the BRICS nations. The BRICS nations are the ones that are coming together. These start with Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. There's your BRICS. And now there's like 200 uh, letters in that BRICS uh, acronym, right? So there's just, there's, there's a ton of countries in that. And so what I believe, my best guess to answer your question would be in a 24 hour window, countries across the globe in a synchronized fashion are going to sell the US dollar causing a complete crippling of the um, of their computer model modules that will not let the computers even handle that that volume and that will cause a sudden collapse maybe 30 percent of the u.s dollar and on that day you're going to see silver go from potentially somewhere in the 25s where they're holding it here to just under $70, about a three and a half fold increase between 60 to $70 in a single day. And that will trigger and start the greatest bull market in human history on gold and silver. And when gold, when silver does that, don't be surprised if, if, if gold goes minimum $33,000 or higher in a, in a single day. And that will, again, trigger and start the greatest bull market in human history, because on that day, the U.S. dollar will lose the status of the world's reserve currency. That was going to be exactly my answer. And um, and really, I, I feel that, um, that that's going to be a very, very significant event that's going to start happening soon. January 1st is when Saudi Arabia officially joins the BRICS nations. And that's just going to be devastating for the dollar. And the um, the um, the collapse of the dollar, as Bo just explained it, is reminiscent for me of back in May of 2010 when they had the flash crash for stocks. Um, one trader accidentally put in an order for billions instead of millions. And once that that billions order went in, the rest of the market reacted to it and there was no stopping it. And that's that's the type of event that is the answer to Pastor Dave's question and is uh, one specific example uh, that's happened in the past of what Bo said could happen. And um, I think that, that that will happen and that would probably make it so that a central bank digital currency could rescue us from the end of all fiat currency. Because if that happened to the dollar, it would probably kill the other currencies as well. What do you think, Bo? Um, I would... 
I, I don't. Here's here's the thing. You know, from I look at it more from a biblical perspective, um, and I value what you say because they are pushing uh, a central bank digital currency. Okay, but here's the the kicker to all of this. If gold and silver explode, see, in a central bank digital currency world, this would be my take on it. They still won't let gold and silver run. See, they will, if there were to be a central bank digital currency, they would still keep gold under 2100 and silver under $25. Why? Because that, that way Babylon still stands. Should that happen, God in my opinion, would intervene because we're at this moment in time where God's going to intervene upon the world, okay? So we're coming into a moment in time because we have overturned Roe v. Wade. God is with us. Who could stand against us? Uh, I don't see a central bank digital currency happening. And the reason being is because that would, in, in its simplest definition, mean that Babylon stands, you see, a central bank digital currency is Babylon's plan, not God's plan. See, that that's the important point I want to address. I do know, and Pastor Dave can confirm this, that when you read Revelation, we're not stopping it. You're not stopping Christ from returning. That That's what they're trying to do. No one's stopping the fifth, the sixth, the seventh seal from opening, which is, you know, these are crazy things when you read the Bible, you know, 100-pound hailstorms, a third of the land disappears. There, you're not. No one's stopping Revelation for the same reason we haven't stopped the Daniel 2 prophecy. The Daniel 2 prophecy stands two and a half thousand years, but what's missing is, while you are watching, while we watch, a stone, Jesus Christ, carved out by no human hand, comes in and destroys, takes down Babylon, okay? And so what I'm trying to say is, before Babylon, just before, just before Nimrod finished the Tower of Babel, this is where we're at right now, just before Nimrod finished the Tower of Babel, God showed up and stopped it. You see, so just before they come in and destroy the financial system and then grab humanity, like you're saying, Andrew, with a central bank digital currency, because that's exactly, if you look in the natural, that's exactly what it looks like. They're going to take down the financial system and they're going to bring on a financial, a central bank digital currency. So I would 100% agree with what you're saying, Andrew, because that's what it looks like. And then when you put God in the equation, you know, and then you put that, you know, and then God, right? And both you put God in that equation, then their plans come to a sudden end. Their dollar that they're going to try to bring in the central bank digital currency, the problem they're going to have is gold and silver, rather than staying under, to, under the roof, gold and silver explode because God intervened. He flips the financial scales. Many, many tackle offshore seem. Your kingdom has come to an end. You've been waving the balance and found wanting. Your kingdom has come to an end and will give him, it will be given to the church. And so when God flips the financial scales, silver was going to go triple in a single day. Like I was saying, gold is going to blow and that's going to take out the banks. Who's bringing on the central bank digital currency? The banks. You see, so their plans for a central bank digital currency blow up because the banks blow up. Because what's what's a jubilee, Pastor Dave? Debt, not forgiveness, debt cancellation means of no legal merit because the banks that are holding the notes blow up. So, long story, you're not stopping revelation. Their, center, their plans for a central bank di digital currency is going to come. That's coming in the future. But before all that manifests, a divine window of favor is coming because, as written behind Pastor Dave, his glory is going to come across the globe, and we're going to see the greatest financial event in human history that's tied directly with the greatest spiritual revival in human history that's going to bring with it signs, miracles, and wonders because God is going to make a way for his bride. So sorry for the long answer. So I agree with what Andrew's saying because it's exactly what it looks like. But there is that part of and then God. Yeah. And you go back to the banquet hall. The reason God acted is be it was his gold and his gold that they were using corruptly. He took the gold back to give to his people. That's right. And that marked the see. Um, Nimrod, he's building the Tower of Babel, that marked the fall of Babylon. Yep. So this is, a, when was the next time we saw that? 
with Belshazzar. Many, many tekel offshore scene. Belshazzar was the head. He was, he represented Babylon. Understand scriptures. You know, you got to go back and study scriptures, people. When you study that, when Belshazzar died that night, Darius came in, but he was Persia. So Babylon fell with Belshazzar. And then Darius came in because this, this kingdom of ba his kingdom of Babylon was given to the Medes and the Persians. So Babylon came to an end. And so what's happening right now is no different than what happened at with, with the writing on the wall and no different when Nimrod was building the Tower of Babel. We're at that moment in time. How awesome, how awesome is this moment in time we're living in? We've been, we've been putting for such a time as this, all three of us have been telling you, prepare, prepare, prepare. Because before Christ showed up, who was in the wilderness screaming, prepare the way for the Lord? We were just nothing but you know, telling you things are about to change in our world, and it's going to be awesome. So there is the people that are out there saying, God, just get me out of here. It sucks. These past four years are horrible. Just get me out of here. Rapture me out of here. And the saints in heaven are saying, I just want to be there and watch the greatest move of God's spirit ever in the history of the world, right? Because we're at that moment in time, but it's really exciting because we're stepping into birth pains, right? When a, when a mother gives birth, you forget about how horrible and all the pain you had after delivery. All I'm saying is this, you know, it, it looks horrible out there and it's going to look worse. Actually, there's a prophetic word that I received. This is actually, I want to say this. I got a prophetic word. I went on Elijah stream in 2011. I received the word, I think it was on the 13th or I believe it was the of October. Whenever I forget the actual date, but it's the 13th, the day after I woke up that morning and all I heard in my head was Lazarus, 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 USA. And when God speaks to me, it's a repetitive thing. I hear the same word or two words and it repeats. And so that night, it was very similar. He goes, Lazarus will be what happened to Lazarus will happen to the United States. Mm -hmm. So I went on Elijah's stream. I did a podcast. And I basically, it was on my YouTube channel right now, if you want to read, it's called Four Days of Darkness. Okay. So we're heading into Four Days of Darkness. That's what's coming, okay? And so and the reason I know that because it's interesting enough, from that time I got the prophecy 777 days to the exact day. Diana Larkin on the this weekend, on December 3rd, put out a prophetic word about Lazarus in the United States. So she, re, she was a witness to my prophetic word to the exact 777 day mark. And the interesting part is, from when I got the prophetic word, 888 days forward from 20, from the when I got the word will be this March 23rd, Purim. Purim. And on that exact day, on that exact day of Purim, Trump will be married to Melania 7,000 days, making Melania Esther. Trump, the king. So we're basically seeing that which has been will be again. We are stepping into historic, historic days. And Trump will, his goal will be to rebuild what God's about to take down. And what is the takedown? Babylon. Babylon's coming down. So it's really exciting to to watch this, and it's it's amazing to you know to, to have us three together, and then and have Andrew just know all this, have all the knowledge about precious metals. You know, it's just it's just the point. Is there's so many people out there that are so entrenched in their in this financial system. They're holding on to you know they they may they have they have these jobs. They have these probably large. A lot of people have large size four hundred one ks, IRAs, all this stuff, and and they think they're they're wealthy. But what what you have, and they undertake them here. But when you look at your four hundred one k, your IRA, all these these and these these things that you have, they're nothing but digits on paper. Continue, Andrew. Oh, that that actually leads to a question that somebody asked me on Sunday when I got excited that um, that gold was at twenty one hundred and forty nine dollars an ounce. And um, they asked me, where do you think it's headed? I go, well, 2300 to 2500 an ounce in the short term. And the next question was, if that happens, will you sell the gold that you have? And I go, no. And they said, why? And I said, well, what am I going to sell it for? 
if I sell the gold, I'm going to get greenbacks. Well, I got the gold because I didn't want the greenbacks because the greenbacks aren't worth the paper that they're printed on. So I will keep the gold for as long as possible, even if it pulled back a little bit, because it's the only real currency that's out there. And, and I truly believe that. And I would sell gold if, say, um, there was an emergency, a family member needed help, or if um, just for reasons like that. But uh, but to sell it, just to sell it because it went up? No, not for me. I I think it's more valuable than any currency out there. And it is a currency. It's not buying a, a Ferrari or a Lamborghini that's going to probably lose value over time. It's going to hold its value. It's going to be a hedge against inflation and likely continually grow in price. And that's our secondary goal. When you look at the financial system and the examples I gave you, okay, at the time of Nimrod and he was building the, building the Tower of Babel, when God intervened, understand when God intervened at the Tower of Babel, everything changed. Understand when Belshazzar died, he was finished and Babylon was finished. And then, and then King Darius came in and it was the start of the Persian Empire. We're stepping into a moment in time like that. So... Mm -hmm. You're at, you, that was a great point you made. What are you going to sell back into the dollar? The dollar will be a part of Babylon that just fell. I'm going to repeat that. When the dollar loses the status of the world reserve currency, that will be the fall of Babel, the fall of Babylon. You don't want to go back there. It's it's finished. You're you're By holding gold and silver today, you're in the new money system of the new kingdom that's coming. You just don't know it yet. And so the, the, the Andrew made a great point. Why would you sell it back into a kingdom that just fell? Why do you want that mo kingdom's money? It fell. And so that's the point of owning precious metals because you're taking Babylon's money right now. You're buying gold and silver in preparation for the new kingdom that's coming. And when the new kingdom arrives, you've got the new money that's going to be used in that new kingdom. And I hope that gives people a really good explanation as to why you don't want to sell it because you're holding the new money of the new kingdom. And that money is going to have what's called true price discovery. And that's why gold will easily at some point be $40,000 plus like Bitcoin right now. Why? Because in that kingdom, they created so much money. You know that energy is not destroyed. It's transferred. Where is that in the Bible? The great wealth transfer, Proverbs 13, 22, the wealth of the sinner, Babylon, is stored up for the righteous. There's a great wealth transfer. Is it scriptural? No one's making it up. It's in the Bible. It hasn't happened yet. That's why, that, you know, there's so many things in the Bible that haven't happened yet. So what a great time to be living right now. And we've been telling you, we're not giving you financial advice. We're just telling you if what we speak about is resonates with your heart, and you're looking at your 401ks or your IRAs and see all these digits in there, just know that they're nothing but digits that were created out of thin air and on a stock market crash, they add another digit or two more, they create more to stick it in the stock market to pump the markets back up. And all it is is smoke and mirrors. In the crash of 2020, March, they created $7 trillion over the weekend, stuck it back in the stock market and everything's fixed. See, on paper, it looks like everything's fine. That's why when you study what happened, you know, the, um, uh, the Wizard of Oz, you know, once you, when they open that curtain, it's just a little guy standing there with a big loudspeaker, okay? So what they've got is a lot of money. They got infinite, not a lot, they got infinite amounts of money. Infinite amounts of money to make everything look. It's all good. It's all good. But in this all good system, you're enslaved because every day you're running to work, because you've got mortgages, people have mortgages, student loans, credit cards, you just go on and on, the list is on and on, and, and everything keeps expanding all the time, because they keep creating more and more and more all the time. Why have people's homes doubled in value in the past two, three, three, four years? Since the crash of 2020, real estate from across globally, especially United States here, I know in California, you know, real estate's doubled. Doubled. Am I not, you know, Andrea, it's not happening in California. Look at rental rates. Yep. Gone crazy. It, Why? Money supply. Talk about money supply, Andrew. 
Well, there's so much money out there because uh, money was so cheap to borrow for the better part of a decade that uh, everybody out there was out there buying property, creating this um, this like artificial market where just everyone's just piling into real estate, just like they did in the years leading up to 2007. And um, even in the San Fernando Valley here in California, homes that 10 years ago cost about... Um, uh, about 600,000 700,000 they've tripled in price since then and that's what what's happened with this um, policy that the government and the federal reserve have had in printing these dollars so it's it's helped people make a lot of money but it is a bubble and it's probably about to burst when the banks go down in, in a great wealth transfer okay it's there's many things that happen in the great wealth transfer the jubilee okay so a jubilee because we're in the 50-year jubilee cycle. How do we know? Well, we know Roe v. Wade has been 50 years in this 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 December, no, actually this January 21st, I believe, will be the end of the 50-year jubilee cycle for Roe v. Wade. Okay. And so we you know Klaus Schwab World Economic Forum has been 50 years, the US petrodollars 50 years, and you know, we got confirmation with the Yom Kippur War, which is 50 years ago, which led us into the Tabernacle War that we just started here in October. So what I'm trying to show you, these are biblical times we're living in. And scripturally, Leviticus is very clear, right? Pastor Dave, Leviticus, 50 yep. year, thou shalt consecrate the 50th year. And so we we know we're in the 50 year window. We are in the 50-year window, and it says, Thou shalt consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout the land. We are in the 50-year jubilee cycle. This is awesome. We haven't had a jubilee in centuries. Why? Because Babylon's been controlling humanity. But because we're 400 years from the Mayflower, and we're now exactly 400 years because the first Thanksgiving was 400 years ago. It was in 19, it was in uh, six, uh, 1623. So we are at a 50 year mark right now. So this is, we're stepping into something historic where God intervenes on the world. And I want to actually, if your staff can quickly pull up slide 21, because I just made this about a half an hour ago before we jumped on. But slide 21 is really fun to look at because when did the war start, Pastor Dave? Tabernacles, right? Okay, so it's just showing you as tabernacles on the last day of tabernacles, tabernacles ended on the 6th and through the 7th. And that's when the war started. How crazy is this? Now, let's look again. See, when does God show up? At the very, very end, at the, at the 12th, you know, 11th, 11th hour, right? Like the very end, that's when God always, when there's no way out. And then, so you look at these last moments in time. So when you look at what happened, Corona came on the scene. You had Hanukkah. It started on the 22nd of 29, year 2019, but it ended on the 30th. On the 30th was the first diagnosed case of COVID. On the very last day of Hanukkah, four years ago, we know that and then the second seal, that was the first seal manifesting, second seal opened on Pentecost. Now we're in, again, we're in a feast. We're in a moment in time, which is a godly time window. God's window here starts this Thursday, the 7th, Hanukkah. Yeah. It ends on the 15th. So what I'm saying is between the 12th Next week and the 15th, particularly the 15th, I'm just saying, watch out, because we're in another biblical time point. We're, I'm going to repeat, we're in a biblical time point. We just saw gold and silver break vertical, specifically gold. Gold always is on a race. Gold the first one out. If it was a race, it's the first one out of the, out of the, uh, out of the uh, starting gates. And then shortly thereafter, silver catches up and then blows past gold and takes off. So we're we're stepping into a huge race. We're in a moment in time, which I know is going to be very, very popular. We're at a four-year mark here as we're stepping into the year 2023. So that's what I wanted to tell people. We're at a very critical time point. Uh, we're four years from when the first met seal manifests. We're stepping into Hanukkah this Thursday. I'm telling you, watch next week. My charts are also confirming next week. Is it's supposed to be very exciting for precious metals, which would line up with what Pastor Dave was saying. 
He's hearing a lot of things in the month of December. And coincidentally, we're stepping into Hanukkah. All right. So we're going to, I know Andrew's got to run. So we're going to let you have the uh, last couple of minutes, Andrew. Yes. Um, all these, all of this is great info and great points. And it really all points to people needing to ensure everything that they've ever worked for. And right now, the way to do that is through gold and silver. You need to get your hands on some tangible assets. And uh, if you'd like to learn how to do that, if you've already done it and feel that uh, that you'd like to take advantage of this little pullback in gold and silver so that you don't miss the next time it, it does a vertical move to reach us, you would go to bh-pm.com and fill out the online form there and uh, definitely inquire about the retirement accounts because for people that are approaching retirement age, you can park your investment, your retirement into gold and silver and have it be a non-taxable event. Definitely reach out to us and let us explain to you how that can work. In closing, there's um, right now is a great time because the herd is not coming toward gold and silver. We're just a select few that are woke enough to understand that this is what we need to do. When other countries step in, then we're just going to really see the gold and silver that's available start to diminish and the wait times to receive it are going are gonna to take longer. The premiums are going to be higher. And there's going to be a lot of scammers out there. So definitely reach out to someone that's vouched by somebody like Bo Polney that you know and believe in, and at least give us a shot to explain it to you. And uh, right now, our our turnaround time to getting with you is usually within about 24 hours. So if it's on a Friday, we might not get back with you until Monday. But we've really fast-tracked our system on how, how quickly we could get these retirement accounts uh, transferred. We're able to do them probably the fastest in the business and without it being a taxable event. So I hope to hear from a lot of you as soon as possible. I have used Andrew several times already. And I'm telling you, it's just the moment you send the wire to the moment the stuff arrives, wherever you're picking it up at or wherever it's being received at, that's that like the window of like, I sure hope it shows up. I'm telling you, um, make sure you're not using people. In, there's a lot of people that are out there, very good dealers out there, but there's a lot of scams going on out there. So yeah. I just know, I know personally from personal experience, Andrew, when I send a wire to him, like in a heart, sometimes it comes in a couple days. It's quick, crazy quick how Andrew fast he delivers. But my point is, if you know, if in your heart you feel you're going to be buying precious metals, you want to buy them because you want to protect your family's assets, truly what you want to do, please use somebody that you know will deliver and very quickly. Because we're we're at a really important time here, but you want to make sure that you do get your delivery ASAP. That's absolutely oh, yeah. true. Yeah, and just just one final thought before I go. I just um, as we have passed Thanksgiving and head toward uh, the holidays and the end of the year, this is a good time for me to say thank you to all the people that have reached out, whether you've um, invested or not. It's um, it's It's been a pleasure to service all of the different people out there. I hope to do it for as long as possible. But to Bo's point and Pastor Dave's point, you've got a lot of choices out there, but you should go with somebody that's vetted somebody that's used the source that you're considering using and had good experiences. And to this point, I think that for the most part, we've done that. So so thank you. And I hope to hear from a lot more of you sometime in the near future. Well, uh, in the last couple of minutes, what is your what is your hope and your excitement? Because sometimes you don't show a lot of excitement. <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest really, time in the world to be alive i know that's the thing is right i see people you know they, they when you look at your tv sets you watch what's going on in the world right um the the, the dilemma and the challenge is most of the time you get wrapped up in what you're watching right because it, it's you know there's the thing about the, you know, the way the brain works is whatever you last put in your head like when you go to sleep whatever you last watch is what's mostly going you know, you're programming your mind when you wake up the first thing you put into you first thing you see you're programming your mind it's like when you read a book, right? You'll remember the front of the book, the first few pages, and you'll mostly remember the back of the book, but or a movie, same thing too, but you don't remember what's going on in the middle. And so it's so important to when you wake up, you know, read your Bible. Or when you wake up, you know, listen to good news, you know, tur turn his glory on, right? And the first thing you do is do not turn the news on. So the last thing you do is before you go to bed, don't turn the news on, right? Don't, instead, go listen to his glory. Maybe listen to my channel, but listen to something positive that's going to give you hope because Evil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And Christ comes to give you life, life more abundantly. There's nothing to fear in this world. But the reason I'm excited and, and happy about things, because I there's no fear in me. The reason there's no fear in me, because I know what God has showed me. I know in my bones, in my heart, and right into my bones, 
I know it's the truth. I know what, what we talk about is the truth, Pastor Dave, and we're starting to see it happen right now. We're starting to see this happen, but we're we're simply waiting. Isaiah 61, the year of the Lord's favor, that's a jubilee. That is, by definition, a jubilee. We're in it, 50 years. This is it. It's, a four, it's eight cycles of 50, 400 years. It's a 50-year cycle. We are in a super jubilee that hasn't happened in centuries. We're in it right here. This is the year, but we don't know the day of vengeance. See, so Isaiah 61, it's, no one's going to know the day of God's vengeance because it's a secret, because if he revealed it, then it may not uh, work out the way God wants it to be, but God's never lost. And so for that reason, he's never going to speak through any prophet, his his day, his kill shot day, you know, the day of vengeance day, and, and the particularly exact events, how it's all going to play out, because it's perfectly orchestrated by God to make sure it perfectly happens, just like what happened perfectly at the Red Sea, just like what happened perfectly at the Tower of Babel, just like what happened perfectly with Belshazzar and his in the, in the fall of Babylon and, and, the, and the Medes coming in, and the Persians of the Medes coming in. So all of this is perfectly orchestrated by the hand of God, and we get to watch it, because Daniel 2, verse 30, while you were watching. So we get to watch this moment in time. And I know it's been very frustrating for a lot of people, because evil's had four years to do its thing. Like, it's it's really been, you know, uh, but it's also in this four years, evil's exposed itself, yes. and it's going to get worse yet. So these four days of darkness, let's let's look at some examples of darkness. Jesus dying on the cross. Well, the apostles, all, I think all the apostles fled, if I'm not mistaken right. right they all fled he's in the tomb for three days you know on the third day he rises but he's in the tomb for at least two days you know maybe three nights and so he's imagine being there like we look at oh jesus rose from the dead yeah that happy joy joy but 24 you know for when he died on the cross there was no happy joy joy they, they were they were freaked out you know the, the lord was he's on a cross Lazarus is dead. Everyone's mourning and crying, right? So when you when you look at all of these events that happen in the Bible before the victory, you know, before the glory manifests, it gets it got really dark. And so Jesus said, so that you might see the glory of God. Exactly. You see, so it's going to get really dark. Do expect three days of darkness. I find it interesting that we're heading into the winter solstice, which is the 21st, and then from the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, so three days, so 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, the sun does not change on its rise. And then on, that's why they, these people are sun worshipers, they're the sun gods, sun worshipers, S-U-N sun and so that's why christmas is on the 25th it's called the winter crux and the winter crux specifically is on the 25th the each day starts getting longer so their sun rises s-u-n begins to rise i find it interesting that this is going to happen this way i don't know nobody knows but for three days the sun doesn't change on the fourth day it begins to rise. I personally believe we could, because I know something's going to be historic going down here in, in into Christmas. It's going to be a white Christmas and a black Christmas. Yeah. I personally believe God's going to use their satanic, you know, their Christmas. It's their Christmas because Christ was not born at on on a sun. He's not a sun god, right? It's he's s he's capital S O N. So I you know from Revelation twelve calculations, he was born in September. Okay, and so. I believe we could see the greatest Christmas the world's ever seen for the bride. See, God's going to use their time window and mock them, and he's going to destroy their plans. So they're going to be potentially, and remember, because even the Federal Reserve Act, they did it on the 25th or 24th when everybody was out. So they, they secretly pushed in the Federal Reserve Act on the 24th or 25th of Christmas when no one is there. So I find that this Christmas season going to be potentially could be very exciting. So we could have one of the greatest Christmases we've ever seen in our life. So that would make it one of the greatest Christmases or the white Christmas. And on the other side, 
if God intervenes, this will be a horrific Christmas for the evil side. And so we but, could see something transition as we're heading here in December. And that takes you to what you're feeling and maybe hearing through some of your contacts about the month of December. Yeah, there was a specific date in two two different um, uh, generals. They, they're both generals. Um said the exact same date and they never give dates and i'm not going to give the date either because in war you never know if, if it's going to be pushed back it's war but yeah the, both the dates were confirmed by both of them and they point to that window that you're talking about exact date yeah and so we, so we're just going to have to see how this plays out what I'm, i know very clearly is from the summer solstice which was when the text came out linking hunter to his father so that that linked him he's been denying that he had any correlation or in relation to his son's business dealings and then on the summer solstice literally it was exposed and then so 180 degrees from that or days will be six months will be the winter solstice which is when all of this is supposed to go down and that would complete the four-year cycle so three and a half years into the summer solstice and then there's a six-month transition window into the winter solstice which would be the 21st of december and then that leads us into three days and then that starts us, and then, then Christmas comes on the 25th, that they call. So uh, as we're heading into year-end, it's supposed to be exciting as heck and crazy as heck. Um, should God intervene, do expect, or remember, when God intervenes, it's going to be earthquakes, eruptions, so we could see all of this going down. Um, all very possible to, to see these things because when the glory manifests, it's going to be, you know, when Jesus died on the cross, everything shook. That's when the yep. veil was torn, right? And so when God intervenes, it, it involves with, um, you know, signs. <laughs> Let's just say, call them signs for whatever it's going to be. But in, that includes the the sh is shaking. You know, I'm definitely telling you, it's going to include shaking if God's going to That's intervene right. on this. Um, and so, and, the, and it was interesting because that Diane Larkin uh, prophetic word literally was 777 days. I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. Uh, from when I, I I received it, exactly 777 days. And it was very clear that the like, world's going to go, and that's what God revealed to me. It's going to be like Lazarus, right? It's going to look horrible. So these people will fully come out and expose themselves of who they are, what they're doing. It's going to look horrible. And they're, they're going to think they won. I'm going to repeat yep. that. They will think they won and they pulled it off. Whatever, you know, this horrific thing, they're going to believe that they pulled it off. And then on the fourth day, which is when Lazarus rise and Lazarus comes out of the tomb, and that will be the when God intervenes, that'll be the official birth of God's kingdom here, here on earth. And that'll be it's marked by celebrations. Uh, it's going to be uh, probably, you know, that I'll potentially could mark one of the greatest days in human history that we've ever seen. So, again, we don't know how it's going to play out. Uh, I do know that my charts are saying that uh, look out for ne starting next week for precious metals. So I, I do believe we're, we're having a little final pullback right here. We got support what we're trading. And the next takeoff is an explosion. Mm. And repeat that. The next takeoff on precious metals is an explosion. And so it won't be a $75 on gold. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh no. It's gonna be much more than that. And silver's gonna blow. It's gonna, it's gonna go, it's just gonna blow vertical. And so, and is it gonna happen next week? There's a very good chance it's coming. And it's gonna happen December again. It's it's this is God's day. He's gonna pull this off. It'll be a secret, but we're this close to it right now. Next week's looking very exciting. I do find next week very interesting because uh it's the last four days starting monday monday is the 11th and then friday is the 15th and so the last day of hanukkah is next friday yeah. which would correlate remember we're going to have its opposite cycles so four years so when corona came on scene it was four years to right now but corona started on the last day of hanukkah so now we're heading into four years of glory his glory the greatest time a window of divine favor which means that what well, means but potentially my calculation my guess would be the last day of hanukkah this time around in the year 2023 is the 15th of december so i don't know but i'm just saying you know next week onwards it's gonna be an awesome 
Christmas. It's going to be um, it's going to be a, a window of a massive change in the world. So just you know, so whatever goes down, I want to finish on this. Whatever happens, make sure you have some food and water extra. Make sure you've got you know just you have extras in the house. You know, yeah. many people don't have the ability to buy precious metals. Don't worry about it. God's going to bless when the blessings are coming in so big. Don't worry about it if you don't cannot buy precious metals. This is not a conversation about buying precious metals. This is a conversation about preparing for what's coming. But those that have the means, if you do have digits in a bank, I'm just telling you, when the banks go down, the mortgages collapse. Real estate is going to collapse next year. If the banks go down, the bonds break, real estate collapses, and precious metals embark on the greatest bull market in human history. So I just want to finish with that, Pastor Dave. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thank uh, you, I Bo. Just, I, I truly hope people have listened to us, and thank you so much. God bless. God bless. That wraps up today's Take 5. God bless you, and go in his shalom. Beverly Hills Precious Metals Exchange is a client-focused firm devoted to assisting our clients with precious metals. Our clients range from first-time to serious coin collectors and investors seeking to add precious metals to their investment portfolios. We are not interested in volatile investments, leveraged products, and intangible assets. With rising inflation and the devaluing of the dollar hurting middle-class families, investing in gold and silver ensures protection for your hard-earned money. Save the value of your money today by investing in gold and silver at Beverly Hills Precious Metals. Shalom.